St. Andrews, good morning. The Lord be with you. And happy Mother's Day to all of you who are here and those of you who are uh, watching the recording. Happy Mother's Day to you all as well. Friends, couple of announcements from uh, Margaret. Welcome and good morning to all mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and everybody in between. Of all the special joys in my life, the biggest one and the smallest, a mother's love and tenderness is the greatest of all. God bless you all today and throughout the year. Welcomes, or worship services will continue to be showing on Shaw Spotlight Channel 9 or Channel 105 on Blue Curve. They will be broadcast Sundays at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. These same services are the ones now available on St. Andrew's Facebook page with a link to YouTube. Search for St. Andrew's Lethbridge. Presbyterian Daily Devotions can be found on the www.presbyterian.ca. The prayer wall, please continue to keep Barbara Lansick in your prayers. On May 24th is our next turn at the soup kitchen, and we still require five uh, assistants in the morning from 9 to 1, and five more from 11.45 to 1. Would you uh, please let Terry know if you can help? Sorry? Target Hunger, Hunger is a major fundraiser for the Lethbridge Food Banks. With this year will be June 10th, and you can sign up for a route starting May the 1st. For more information, please check the uh, Target Hunger website or contact Terry. It's also in the uh, bulletin, the uh, information. Our spring fundraiser this year will be held on Sunday, June the 3rd. And for more information, please contact Ann Savo. The information again is also in the bulletin. And there will be a golfing date uh, called Best Ball on Sunday, sorry, Saturday, June the 10th, the Raymond Golf Course. The um, hospitality team is taking care of this, and it's $30 a person with a cart, uh, with a cart, or 24 without a cart. And you can see uh, Deb or Kim for more information on that, or you can uh, talk to uh, Doug Craig as well. More information again in the bulletin. There's also information on the daily happenings in the church in the bulletin. Please keep in mind our Bible study on Tuesday evenings at 6.30. It's a time to go over the sermon and answer other questions on the Bible. It's a great little get together. If you would uh, like more information, please call Debbie in the church office or speak to one of the elders after the service. That's all the announcements we have today. If anybody has anything else, please let me know. Okay, thank you, and have a good morning. Thank you, Margaret. Um, friends, I invite you to stand our first hymn for today, hymn 307, God of the Sparrow, God of the Well. If you are able, I invite you to stand. <clears throat>
Please be seated. Come and join me for the call to worship. Let us see you today, O God. Let us hear you this day, O God. Let us sense your presence, O God. Come, let us worship God. Let us pray. God of life, we praise you this day for the gift of your creation. As new life rises around us in flowers beds and farmers fields, in the nests and burrows of your creatures, we praise you for the gift of our lives and for all those people from our parents, grandparents and great grandparents to our teachers, coaches and good friends who have encouraged us along the way. So in this time of worship, encourage us in the present moments of our lives, challenging as they may seem. Refresh us with the new life you promise us in Christ Jesus, in whose name we praise you as the Spirit prays within us. Amen. Before we come to our prayer of confession, I invite you to stand. Let us sing, Lead Me, Lord, 575, three times. be seated. Join me for the prayer of confession. God of love, we are grateful for the love you bless us with in our homes and families. Yet, you know family life is not always easy. Our love for each and another gets strained some days. Forgive us if we have taken our family for granted. Give us grace to repair relationships where strain is showing. Amen. Friends, while it is true that we all have sinned, it is a greater truth that we are forgiven through God's love in Jesus Christ. God offers us mercy and newness of life today. So be at peace with God, with yourself, and with one another. If you are comfortable, let us extend the peace of Christ to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all.
face off because we really didn't. of course be with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Friends, today we have special choir performance all by males. <laughs> So everyone choir members today and everyone willing to join on the spot, you are more than welcome to come and, to come forward and join us. <laughs> oh I see one okay coming forward. <laughs>
you may be seated. Thank you to me and to all for your request. <laughs> um, for the time, I have uh, time for the young at heart. You can just uh, stay where you are. I have a story that I want to share with you. I believe you have heard about this story somewhere circulated in the social media during Mother's Day. There you go. So it's a, a story <clears throat> about the mother who makes the genius, Thomas Alpha Edison. So one day, the young Thomas Edison came home, handed home, uh, came home and handed a, a paper to his mother from school. And then he told to his mother this, my teacher gave this uh, a paper to me and told me to give it to uh, to give it only to you. He couldn't read uh, letters at that time. So his mother's eyes were tearful as she uh, read the letters out loud to her son. And then she said this to a, to a little Thomas, "Your son is a genius. This school is too small for him and doesn't have good teachers for training him. So please teach him yourself." Edison's mother decided to educate her, uh, to her uh, at home, abandoning the school that Edison, uh, Edison had attended for only three months. She prepared an excellent homeschooling routine for her son, and Edison left his school behind without a second thought. And then years later, Edison's mother died, and then he was renowned as one of the greatest inventors of the century. And one day he was going through his old family things, Suddenly he noticed a folded paper in the corner of a drawer and he took it and opened it up. On the paper was written, that's the letter from the school. <laughs> Your son is adult. We will not allow him to attend our institution any longer. Thomas Edison cried for hours. And then he wrote in his diary, Thomas Alpha Edison was an adult child that by a hero mother became the genius of the century. At the very end of his life, Edison, Thomas Alpha Edison famously quoted this, my mother was the making of me. She was so true and so sure of me and I felt I had someone to live for. Someone I must not disappoint. Friends, that's the power of a mother that makes a genius. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer together. the word of the Lord. The scripture reading this morning is from 1 Kings 3 verses 16 to 28 found on your pure Q Bible in page 306. Solomon's wisdom in judgment. Later two women who were prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One woman said please my lord this woman and I live in the same house 
and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, the woman also gave birth. We were together and there was no one else with us in the house. Only the two of us were in the house. Then this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. She got up in the middle of the night and took my son from beside me while your servant slept. She laid him at my breast and laid her dead son at my breast. When I rose in the morning to nurse my son, I saw that he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, clearly it was not the child I had born. But the other woman said, no, the living son is mine and the dead son is yours. The first said, no, the dead son is yours and the living son is mine, so they argued before the king. Then the king said, one says, this is my son that is alive and your son is dead. Well, the other says, no, not so. Your son is dead and my son is the living one. So the, son, the king said, bring me a sword. And they bought a sword before the king. The king said, divide the living boy in two. Then give one half to one woman and half to the other woman. But the women, woman whose son was alive said to the king, because compassion for her son burned within her, please my lord, give her the living boy and do not kill him. The other said, it shall be neither mine nor yours, divide it. Then the king responded, give the first woman the living boy, do not kill him, she is the mother. All Israel heard of the judgment that the king had rendered, and they stood in awe of the king because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to execute judges, justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks, Margaret. Let us pray. Spirit of truth and love, move in us and among us as we listen to the scriptures read and proclaimed. Open our minds and our hearts to God's living word so that we may know it more fully and follow it more faithfully day by day. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. The familiar passage of our scripture reading today reveals some of the things about true motherhood. I believe you have heard about this story. Quite scary to hear it. The first time I heard this story when I was in the Sunday school. It was so scary to hear this. The king said, give me the sword and then the king will divide the living baby into two. It was so scary. So I think it's good not to tell that story in the Sunday school. <laughs> it's stick in my mind like so scary to me. And then the teacher bring the you know, fake sword like, woo, woo. I was like, woo. <laughs> Well, this passage about two mothers marks the first recorded occasion of King Solomon's renowned wisdom. And today's message is not really about Solomon's wisdom, so we just set aside Solomon for a while. And, and, and we will come back to him when we return to Ecclesiastes series. So this story is one of the best known in the whole Bible. Having been promised wisdom, Solomon now had opportunity to use that wisdom. The situation was that two mothers came to Solomon to settle a very serious dispute. Something very bad had happened and these mothers came to the highest score ever in the land at that time. They stood before the king. They are commoners. Now they stood before the king as the only ones who, as the only one who knew what really happened. They had been alone and no one else was able to confirm each of uh, testimony of these mothers as the normal legal, uh, legal uh, process required. At that time, the king represented the highest court of appeal in the nation. It's almost like the Supreme Court for us today. The Israel's kings had to sometimes settle particularly hard cases, and this was one of them. This was no ordinary situation, and these were no ordinary mothers as well. If there is such a thing, every mother is extraordinary. So these two women had a very, however, immoral lifestyle. 
Now, the translation that Margaret just read is the softened versions. First King chapter 3, 16 says, Two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. Again, not only these two were commoners, but these two were immoral, have immoral lifestyles. There were many questions that we could ask about these women, these two prostitutes. What was their past? How did they get to this place in their lives? How, was it out of desperation? Where were the fathers of these children? But in the end, the only information we have is that this one. There were two prostitutes. And second, these two are mothers. That's all. I don't know the background. <laughs> I tried to look dig deeper into the commentary. No one can really able to, to, to tell us the background. So these mothers had made this bad decisions in their life in the past. And maybe we all can relate to that too. Maybe we have made bad decisions in our life as well. Both women in this story had made really bad decisions. But one of them kept making mistakes. And one of them continues to make one bad decision after another. So this bad mother had carelessly perhaps suffocated her child in the middle of the night. Now I cannot imagine how she felt, you know, to realize that you have killed your own son in the morning when you woke up. Oh, so I cannot really imagine that. When faced with situations like that, we can make more bad decisions in order to respond to that awful death of our, of, of our own uh, child. So she made the, the, the situation worse by swapping her deceased child for the one who was alive while the other mother slept. I was thinking, why did she do that? Some commentaries believe that she perhaps did this to avoid a disgrace of killing her own child. She also perhaps was distressed of her losing her own and that she could not fathom the, 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 the reality being childless at that time in that culture. She cannot fathom that. Oh, I, I will be childless. Women, she cannot do that. So out of her desperation, she then lied about which child was hers. And to make matters worse, she was later willing to have the living child killed. The situation spiraled out of control by the one mother's own choices. And now they were both before the king, Solomon. Now both mothers in the story claimed the living child as their own. Without other witnesses or evidence, they have no DNA at that time. Solomon had to use his godly wisdom to solve the case. But for now, Solomon, will, uh, Solomon relied on his discernment. So he decided to produce his own evidence by trying the case based on the women's ma ma maternal, uh, motherly instincts. This is very interesting. Solomon calling for a sword, he ordered the child to be cut into two with each woman getting an equal share. What kind of king <laughs> requesting to, uh, ordering to do? This sounds barbaric for sure. But at that time, in the ancient times, it was a common practice in the ancient legal tradition to divide property evenly between two parties if the judge could not determine who owned the disputed property or land. And we should not think that Solomon considered seriously to, uh, uh, the child as a property or that he was being serious about killing the child. No. This is just the way Solomon exercised 
uh, the wisdom from God. Solomon was exercising his godly wisdom, in fact. He wanted to expose the true mother's compassion by ordering scary uh, order to kill the, the child. Now, the real mother who had already cared enough for her child to plead for her case before the king showed her motherly compassion for her son. She begged Solomon to give the baby to the other woman in order to spare the child's life. In the startling contrast, the careless, dishonest, and the evil mother woman was willing to have the child killed. Now her cruelty was exposed at that time, just as the true mother's kindness was revealed before the king. So therefore Solomon was able to judge rightly and to give back the true mother her child. Now friends, this passage reveals more than just Solomon's wisdom. This passage also reveals few things that I found interesting about motherhood. First, this passage show me, show us that first thing about motherhood, the mother, a mother always knows her children. I imagine if a woman carries a baby for nine months and then goes through hours and days of labor, she's going to know her baby just he just know it. I remember when my son was still a baby, and then, and then we, we, we uh, were at the church, um, and then there are many other babies, and then uh, and then we just uh, sit a little distance from from the, the nursery rooms, and then Ben was crying, every other baby also crying, but then Sally can recognize that's Ben's cry. With my five years, I can. It's all the same. The baby's crying are the same. But no, Sally said, no, that's Ben crying. I will take a look. So interesting, because maybe she has this nine months experience with Ben. I don't have it. So I don't really recognize all oh, babies crying the same. But not for mother's ears. So the mother knows uh, 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 her children. In fact, I hear, in, I, even I hear there's a special bond between a mother and her children. It is a bond that, that continues even if the child is separated shortly after birth. I have even heard of mothers knowing their children before they are even born. The true mother in this passage knew her child and she was not fooled by the deception of the babies being swept. Look at the following verses, 1 King 3, 20 to 21. And she arose at midnight and took my son beside me while your servant slept. She was so humble. Before the king, she addressed herself, your servant. When your ser servant slept and laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast, when I arose in the morning to nurse my child, behold, he was dead. I can almost imagine he was crying. But when Look at what I bought over there. When I look at him closely in the morning, behold the king. He was not the child that I had born. I knew my child. This is not my baby. When I look at him closely, you cannot fool real mother. When I look at him closely, wait, this is not my baby. Now, I cannot imagine the initial reaction of the true mother that she had when she found that the dead child lying next to her. Imagine you woke up in the morning and next to you was a dead baby. It was probably the worst feeling she ever had. It was probably similar to the other mother's reaction when she found the child dead. However, true mother was not fooled easily. She looked at the child closely and knew this was not her child. Maybe the children were easily recognizable, especially with a close look. I think, however, this reveals something about mothers. I think this also confirms that a mother really knows her children. A mother who has carried her child for nine months and has anticipated finally meeting her child 
and welcoming him or her into this life. Surely, mothers know uh, her child. This mother was not full and she knew her son and she wanted him back, no matter what. Now, in the same way, your mom and my mom knows you. If she has given you birth and raised you and been there through your whole life, your mother knows you so well. And that's a good thing about a mother. It's good for someone to know us well. So seeing the dead child was not hers, and noticing that the other child, the other mother, mother had her child, the true mother, on the second point that I want to share, true mother will fight for her child. Maybe she had compassion for the other mother. Maybe she felt sorrow for her loss. What person would not feel compassion for the loss of a child? This was a terrible situation. However, this true mom of the living child was not about to abandon her own son. She was not about to give up her son without a fight. And you know, most animals have the same basic motherly instinct to fight for their offspring. And mothers are the fiercest fighters in the world when defending their children. When I was small, I was uh, drowning in the swimming pool. And my mother, she couldn't swim. But she jumped to help me out <laughs> in order to help me. I remember that moment. Mothers are the fiercest fighters. She becomes so strong and superwoman suddenly when defending that child. Her child had been stolen, imagine that. And she fought to get him back. So this mother eventually took her case all the way to the highest court in the land. She took her dispute to the king. How many mothers would go all the way to the Supreme Court in today's context if they had to protect their children? We need advocates just like that. We need people who will defend us and fight for us, particularly when we cannot fight for ourselves. And for sure, this child, this baby, cannot defend him or herself. Therefore, this child needs an advocate, and this is a mother's job. As parents, parents have to give up a lot for their children. Parents sometimes have to often sacrifice their dreams and desires to do what is best for their family. Now these mothers also, this mother, this good mother also do the same. And here we come to the third point. True mother knows their children. True mothers will fight for their chil children. And then true mothers also knows exactly what it means to sacrifice for their children. Mothers give up a lot for their children. Sometimes a mother has to make some very hard decisions in their lives in order to do what is best for her children. Some mothers have to give up their children in order to give them the best life possible. Remember Moses' mom? It's hard being, being a mother in their time. True mother in this passage was willing to do that as well. Take a look again on First King 24, uh, for chapter 3, 24, 20, 26. The king said, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought before the king. And the king said, divide the living child into, in two and give half to the one and half to the, uh, to the other. Then the woman whose son was alive said to the king, because her heart yearned for her son. Oh my Lord, give her the living child. And by no means put him to death. But the other, the evil one, said, He shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide him. So facing a horrible situation, the real mother stood up and then sacrificed her desire to have her child back in order to save him. She was willing to give him up in order to give him life. There's a true mother. 
Let me say it again. She was willing to give him up so that she can give him life. This passage says her heart yearned for her son. Now I found a very interesting translation. New International Version and King James Version says this. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love. Another translation. And then King James says this. Then spoke the woman whose living child was unto the king, her bowels yearned upon her son and she said oh my lord give her the living child and in no wisely slay it I love King James version her bowels yearned her bowels yearned for her son or her bowels were, were hot for her child the bowels, the, the ancient people believe, were thought to be the most ancient, most ancient people to be the place for our affection. Her bowels yearned. This was probably because of the sensations with strong emotions excite there. When we get strong feelings about something, about someone, it affects our inner being. Our bowels yearn. When when we, we are physically affected by our emotions. So this true mother's love and compassion for her son overwhelmed her so much. Her bowels yearned. Her love for her son overflowed in such a way to, to where she could not help but act in a way that would save her son. She was willing to give up her claim to have her son if it meant to spare his life. Friends, this is a mark of a true motherhood sacrificing uh, to save her children. And I believe this mother would have been willing to die for her son if she had to do so. This will be a great message about the, sang uh, uh, the sanctity of human life. Giving up a child is a wonderful option if it means uh, 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 giving life to the child. So many women are willing to kill their children. Like the false mothers were here. The real mother though wanted to give her son life. Real mother will go to great lengths to ensure her children are well. This passage reminds me of some of the characteristics, characteristics of true mothers. Mothers know us. They, they, they fight for us. They love us and will sacrifice for us. I trust that most of us have mothers like that. However, maybe you have not known that kind of motherly care in your life. Not all people have the experience of good and caring and sacrificing mothers. The good news is that you still can. These qualities are the same characteristics of God. Knows you, will fight for you, and will sacrifice for you. This is the same character of God. So this passage about the compassionate mother reveals the care also of our heavenly father. That the father has for his children. In fact, the prophet Isaiah made a comparison in the following passage. Very interesting. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you, says the Lord. Friend, God does not forget His children. And He cannot. He is like a true, the true mother in this story who knew her child. Who would not forsake him and have compassion for him. Now, imagine this. How I was contemplating on this story. And imagine this comparison from lesser to greater. Remember that approach, how to understand. Bible sometimes uses the lesser 
uh, 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 situation or, or, or figures in order to express how much more God can do. Now imagine if an immoral woman, prostitute, could be merciful to the son that she gave birth to and could not forget her little child and how much more will God offer the best, very best to care for and to save his children. If an immoral prostitute loves her child this much, how much more does a holy God love his own children? God knows us, no matter what you have done. God knows you and yet he still wants you. Don't you forget that. He is there to welcome you to him like the, the father waiting for the prodigal son to come back. You are never alone for God has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. You have an advocate who is always fighting for you. God also knows sacrifice. He has sacrificed so much for us. He gave his very best for us. He sacrificed and gave his own life so that you and I could live. Yes, God has shown the same motherly traits for us. And God has motherly love too in his character. Isn't it wonderful? Do you know him? Are you part of his family? If not, you can be today. By confessing your need for a savior and turning to, to Jesus for salvation. Because in God, maybe you don't have that mother, worldly motherly love that you need. But in God, you can have the motherly love that you need. God knows you. God will fight for you. God will sacrifice for you. Friends, before I end my sermon, I want to show you a clip. When I move out one day, my mom will be very sad. I feel my mom's love in my heart, like, it's right here. I, I'm feeling it right now. Sometimes I love her, sometimes I don't. But when I'm angry, I don't. My mom is everything to me. She just is this ray of energy and sunlight and positivity. The thing that I wish I could have done more of is thanking her. It didn't matter what shape I was in, I could always come home to mom. My mom was basically the glue that held me together. When I left the Philippines, I knew that my son will be in good hands because I know my mom will take care of him. My mom is kind of smart, she's not that smart. If I would say like 1 to 10, it would be a 5. Maybe my poor dad got the raw end of the deal, but I do remember my mother saying to him when there was an argument about something I'd done, she says, you don't want to hurt her spirit. I remember that. My mom was diagnosed with uh, a really rare disease about 12 hours before she died. So we didn't get a lot of time to, to talk or to say goodbye, but she did get to say that she loved me, which were her last words. Uh, and I cherish that because it, I have, I've been able to hang on to it. I'm probably going to say to my mom, you're a wonderful person and you're my mentor. I tie an invisible string to my heart and she ties the same one to her heart and it's always attached together. My mother, she struggled a lot with addiction. Sorry, I'm getting upset. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. You know, you have partners, you have friends, you have kids, um, but there is nobody else who, um, who will ever care about you as much. My son now always tells me, I love you, Mama. But for 48 years, you realize I didn't say I love you to my mom. I can think of three words. I forgive you. You were good, Mom. You did really good. Thank you. I love you, Mom. 
Hey Chelsea, if moms got paid, how much do you think they should get paid in a year for being a mom? Maybe a hundred dollars? Friends, if you are a mother today, or you was a mother, or you are going to be a mother, or you have, or you are a widow and you have a, a, a daughter and is a mother, or you are a mother and still have a mother, this is a gift for you from us. Go ahead.
Thank you, Lavinia and Brad, Megan, Eva, Marcel, and Ben for distributing the Mother's Day gift. Friends, I read a book by Amy Young, and I found a prayer, and I revised a little bit to make it more relevant for the prayers of the people. This is the prayer. I want you to experience in and through this prayer how much you are loved and how much you are seen by God. Whether today is your greatest joy or deepest heartache as you sit down right now, I want you to know that you are loved. So here goes the prayer. I want you to know I am praying for you if you are like Tamar, struggling with infertility or a miscarriage. I want you to know that I am praying for you if you are like Rachel, counting the women among your family and friends who year by year and month by month get pregnant while you wait. I want you to know I'm praying for you if you are like Naomi and have known the bitter sting of a child's death. I want you to know I'm praying for you if you are like Joseph and Benjamin and your mom has died. I want you to know that I'm praying for you if your relationship with your mom was marked by trauma, abuse, or abandonment, or she just couldn't parent you the way you need it. I want you to know I'm praying for you if you have been like Moses' mother and put a child up for adoption, trusting another family to love the child you birthed into adulthood. I want you to know I'm praying for you if you have been like Pharaoh's daughter called to love children who are not yours by birth, and thus the mother who brought that child into your life, even if it's so complicated. I want you to know I'm praying for you if you, like many, are watching or have watched your mother age or disappear into long goodbye of dementia. I want you to know that I'm praying for you if you, like Mary, are pregnant for the first time and waiting uh, breathlessly for the miracle of your first child. I want you to know that I am praying for you if you, also like Mary, have watched your beautiful black or brown skinned baby murdered by the empire. And even still, all you can do is weep and rage. I want you to know I am praying for you if your children have turned away from you, painfully closing the door of rela on relationships, leaving you holding your broken heart in your hands, and like Hagar, now you are mothering alone. I want you to know that I'm praying for you if motherhood is your greatest joy and toughest struggle all rolled into one. I want you to know that I'm praying for you if you are watching your child or your grandchild battle with substance abuse, a public legal situation perhaps, mental illness, or another situation which you can merely watch unfold. I want you to know that I am praying for you if you, like so many women before you, do not wish to be a mother, are not married, or in so many other ways do not fit into societal expectations, I want you to know that I am praying for you if you carry the beautiful, exhausting, maddening, heartbreaking, wonderful labor of mothering, even though you do not have children of your own. I want you to know that I'm praying for you if you see yourself reflected in all or perhaps none of these stories. On this Mother's Day, wherever and whoever you are, God walks with you. You are loved. You are seen. You are worthy. And may you know the deep love without end of our big, wild, beautiful God, who is the very best example of a parent that we know and need to know. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God reached out into the world in Christ Jesus, calling us to share God's transforming love. We offer our gifts soon as a sign of our readiness to follow Him, praying they will become tangible tokens of that transforming love to others. Let's prepare our hearts for uh, the offering that I sing, May the God of Hope Go with us every day. Hymn 726.
Thank you, Gary. Thank you, boys. Let us pray. God of love that transforms lives, we offer our gifts in gratitude for all we have received in Christ, your beloved Son. Take our gifts and transform them into acts of love that will bless the world in His holy name. Amen. Doxology. Walk in the love of the Lord as Jesus taught us, showing that love to all whom you meet. And may grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, Mother, be with you now and evermore. Amen. Please be seated.